it? Are you ready to go? Yes. Are you ready to go? Yes, I'm ready to go. Right now? So fuck yes, welcome back to the Happy New Host of Bar Dressel. With me as always, Jonathan Hardesty. Oh wait, I wasn't ready. Oh my Shiri god. Shiri Darso. I don't know. I don't have a witty comment. <laughs> <laughs> and Emily Blake. <laughs> Who just laughs at Chewy. <laughs> That's uh, our dynamic now. <laughs> Special guest today, uh, we have Justine, I'm already forgetting your last name, Jen, Justine Jen. It's Gendron, <laughs> right? Gen- Gendron. 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 Gen- fuck. Gen- like Gendry. Like Gendry. From the Cutaways podcast. That one I remembered. Oh, it's me. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I tripped on her hammer on the way in. So for people who have not heard of it before, do you want to pitch your podcast a little bit? Hells Yeah. My best friend and I have a slumber party every other week where we're watching romantic comedies in chronological order. That's the gist. So what (laughs) one did you start with? We started with a film from 1918. It's a German silent film called I Don't Want to Be a Man. Oh, Oh, boy. Yes. Yes. Where do you find this? That was on Netflix streaming at the time. Uh, It's in the public domain if you want to watch that movie. Oh, so it would be like on YouTube or something like that probably? Okay. I don't think you said it what the podcast amazing. is called. Was it? The Cutaways. The yeah. Cutaways. It sounds really interesting. I mean, well, I like the title. Well, pretty much the, the, the girl, she's just like, ah, I don't want to be stuck here. These, like, being watched by my govern- governess or govern person. I don't mm-hmm. remember. This is two years ago. Um, so she uh, dresses like a man, goes to parties, flirts with guys, flirts, flirts with girls, ends up with her governor. Something weird. The end. It's Germany. <laughs> Like a German Bronte sisters novel, yeah, basically. Huh. Okay. I just like the something weird. The end. It's German. <laughs> it's perfect. I mean, this yeah. sounds beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> eighteen something. Uh, nineteen eighteen. Nineteen eighteen. Nineteen eighteen. Yeah, eighteen is too I early. Mean, that, yeah. was, that was very pro, like pr- tr- cross dressing, promiscuity. Yeah. yeah. Being bi. Yeah. Like, that's amazing. It is. It really is. Happened well, you know, <laughs> see, see, when the code came into play or whatever, you I mean, know, that's same, when everything got a little prudish. It's the yeah, same thing after we watched our uh, thing with the starting of the Oscars. Yeah. Uh, and they were like, why can't men touch each other? They used to touch each other back then. There must have been some kind of backlash, and then it just grew. Where everyone got afraid of being gay. Ah, gay! <laughs> That's just what I imagine everyone yelled in the 20s. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess maybe the 30s. Cause the other ones you just sure, hear a lot of sure. screaming in the theater. Oh, no, gay! <laughs> ah! I'm gay now. Uh, so we'll do a quick where have you been doing. Uh, I'll go first. I read the first issue of Dark Knight's Metal this morning. Uh, it came out on Wednesday or I guess uh, eight days ago when you're listening to this. Uh, it has been like the culmination of Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo's Batman run. They've been doing it for years. It's all been leading to this storyline. And the first issue is super underwhelming. Uh, it's, it's a lot of setup. And we just had two issues of setup before this with Dark Knights of the Forge. And I forget the name of the other one. Uh, so I was a little annoyed that they didn't really hit the ground running. But it's still ungodly beautiful because Greg Capullo's drawing it. Let them build. We don't want it to be like but so we d- Game of but Thrones not, that's right my now. Th- we're like, how did you get there so fast? But mm. they had the two pre-issues that were supposed to be all the setup so that once Dark Knight Metal started, it was going to be badass and awesome and it, it wasn't. So basically it, was more it, basically it was like season five or six of Game of Thrones. Yeah. But yeah, that's it yeah. for me. Uh, if, you've, if you've been following any of Greg Capullo and Scott Snyder's run on Batman at all that this is highly recommended because this is what it's all kind of been leading to and it goes from now until february of next year there's going to be a, an issue or two a month and a bunch of crossovers and stuff so it's I, a really big cool time for dc nice. i really like his art his art it, it makes me jealous capullo yeah like he's, when, when you see he's people, incredible yeah it's brian's just, got a man crush on him. i have such a man cr- but i'm not the only one but right. if i could afford a commission by him i really want a commission of batman and uh, damian wayne playing catch in the backyard Aww. it would be adorable and it would cost me like seven thousand well, dollars so i'm never gonna get it and that's you the thing with like anything him and be like can we organize a payment plan <laughs> <laughs> i will pay you like a hundred bucks a month for like the rest of my life a <laughs> hundred bucks a month and then he just sends you a close-up photo of like a little bit more that he's drawn yeah yeah that, this would be great i'm sure he'd be fine with it <laughs> well and but and he is saying on twitter that he wants to do a swamp thing book after this and him drawing swamp oh, thing sounds like the most incredible thing that in the would time. be awesome i'm just excited about swamp thing yeah I'm, I'm, I really hope he does it. But he says it's DC's letting him draw whatever the fuck he wants after he gets done with metal. Yeah. And he says he wants to do Swamp Thing. And I really hope he holds to that because it'd be awesome. I'd buy it. Eight, probably. Yeah. Don't buy Ava then. You have Why a not? child. Be better with your money. <laughs> <laughs> She'll like it too. Life advice. All right, that's it for me. John, do you want to go? <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, so uh, a couple weeks ago, I mentioned I had a, I got a Switch, Nintendo Switch, and I got the second game that exists for it, uh, Legend of Zelda. Breath of the Wild, and I've been having a blast with it. I think oh I'm God, like that game looks so good. I'm like ten hours into it, 
and it's so fun. I didn't, I didn't really read much about it going in, which surprising. I usually just spoil myself on everything game related. And so there's these shrines that you do and they're all puzzle based. So it's like you explore and you do these little mini puzzles that kind of remind me of portal in that cleverness. Like, Oh, here you do this. There's a solution that if you kind of think outside the box, you might be able to solve it. Yeah. And for, for it being on the switch and being able to take it anywhere, that is actually really awesome. Cause I'll just have maybe 10, 20 minutes at a time. And I'll grab the switch and play maybe through a shrine or something and put it down and do something else. And so I can play long stretches or quick. It just lets me play at any time. And it's just really nice. handheld gaming, man. It's going to take off. Oh, I know. <laughs> Chewie, what about you? Um, well, since Brian is back at his job, I don't now, name it. I'm not. not allowed I'm to back say the at name. being alone at night when I get home from work. Uh, so Are I've been watching now, a Brian? lot more TV. Yep. Uh, and I'm catching. I have caught up with Preacher, and I'm catching up with Doctor Who. I'm still an episode behind, or two now in Preacher. Preacher. Yeah, uh, I'm really enjoying Hair Star. Mm. He's uh, so good. And Tulip and all, and just Cassidy. The the level of like complexity they've given Cassidy with his son like is very rewarding. I think. Uh, and, but for Doctor Who. I'm so happy that Moffat is going away finally. It's like he gave up. It's like he just stopped. He like is I out of ideas. Don't know anymore. <laughs> I like Bill, but they, they don't, don't know what to do with her at all. They don't know what to do with well, the she's season gone after Christmas special. <laughs> yeah, but I like Bill a lot. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't think she's didn't... bad. It's just that they don't know what they don't know her how to write for her. Introduction was great, and yeah. yeah, and then they didn't really do anything have, with her. They, so it, it's oh, it's, it's not so that they don't know how to write for her. I just don't think any of them are trying. I think they're just like it's our last season. None of us really fell in love with Capaldi. We miss Matt Smith and I Amy. I did. I love Capaldi. No, we That's love so good. We do, but Who's the that? creators, yeah. the writers, like I don't. Yeah. I think they're all still so like we miss. Amy and Matt Smith as the doctor, that they just didn't care enough to write good stories for Capaldi. And it's really frustrating. Yeah. I mean, Heaven Sent and Hellbent are two. Oh, season, the season before yeah. this one had some really yeah. good episodes in it. Um, but again, it was mostly because they really liked writing for Clara. That's true. There are no episodes of this current season that really stood out as amazing. The no. only one that stood out for me was the first one with the monks. With the whether it turned out to all be digital, I loved that episode. Mm. That was great. There was like real consequences. They had great comedic moments, and there I was don't tension. Even remember. <laughs> like I think that to me, that's the best episode of the whole season. And that was that was Moffat. Oh still yeah, on yeah, the yeah, show? yeah, yeah. Oh weird. Yeah, and th- but then that whole thing was done in three episodes. It I thought didn't that really pay off in a second. I thought that was going to be the rest of the season. Yeah. Them dealing with these monks. I thought it was going to be. And the... it ended up being kind of a really easy problem to solve. Yeah, and then Bill, just I'm sorry. I love the Doctor too, but the Doctor being blind is not a reason to give up all of humanity to let somebody take over the planet. No. That The reasoning there what? was not very good. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, and she's just like, just give him back his eyesight. I'm like, what? No! Well, okay. No! <laughs> he needed the eyesight to not die. Yeah, but, I mean, yeah. he would have just regenerated, so it would have yeah. been yeah, fine. Yeah, but she may not what? have known that. Yeah, I guess. Why doesn't he tell his companions that? Mm. Yeah, just let me die. I'll regenerate. Everything's going to be, be fine. fine. Yeah, yeah. I'll be fine. basically like a primer. Yeah, <laughs> record like a little video. <laughs> so you're traveling with the doctor. It'll be it'll be a lot know. less stressful for you if you knew these things. Like, yeah. the, it, like the one where David Tennant was like giving her all these Martha all the instructions, like pears. Yeah. I hate pears, you know. <laughs> uh, Emily, what about you? What are you gonna do? Uh, I'm gonna bring everybody down right now because oh. I'm sorry because I just watched I watched Detroit. Uh, I watched it before the Nazis started marching in the streets. Oh. Um, but it was, it was, uh, I was wondering because when I got there, uh, I saw it at the Lemley and the theater was really filled with white people. Um, there were no black people in it. There were a couple of Latino people and that was about it. And uh, I was like, that's interesting. And I've seen people saying like, oh, this movie shouldn't have been made by white people. Except when I, as I was watching it, I realized like, actually that was pretty, that made sense because this movie is not for black Americans. Not really. I mean, they already know. They know I mean, the story. They know what it's like. A lot of my black friends on Facebook don't like it. Yeah. I, and I can see, like, they know the story. They know what it's like to live as a black person in fear of the cops. They know. And f- I've heard some people say it feels like torture porn, and I totally get that. But I think, from my perspective, I think for white people, this is as close as we're going to get to understanding. I don't, f- I didn't feel like it was torture porn because I think the key difference between this and torture porn is that torture porn is about titillating. 
torture porn is about you kind of getting a thrill out of watching someone be tortured. And there was no thrill to be had here. There was no joy in watching this. And it was more like, please stop, please stop. And it, it felt like by the time I was done, I just felt like, okay, it, this is for all the people who are like, well, Mike Brown shouldn't have gone into that store or Rodney King should have cooperated with the cops or like anyone who's said that or felt that like if you watch this movie, you at least for that two hours or however long it is, you got to sort of feel like you were in the skin of the people who were going through this. And I think so that it's more about making white people understand what it's like like you can I mean I I know it on a theoretical level but being in that movie immersed in that experience um, made me at least feel for a short amount of time a fraction of what it's like to be black and afraid of cops and then I get to walk out and and not have to deal with it anymore but at least for that moment in time it was a I felt like it was the movie did a really good job of making a way for white people to comprehend that experience that's what I thought so it's really really don't go in if you're looking for a fun experience go in if you're ready to deal with some heavy shit Last but not least. Can I be a little self-promotional in this segment? Absolutely. Yeah. Sure. Great. Because uh, this week, actually, a, the feature I edited last year came out on VOD. Ooh, oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. It's called Face to Face. Face, the number two, and face. What? Uh, yeah, because it's all <laughs> internet-y. Actually, mm-hmm. it's, it's really cool because it was all shot entirely on GoPros huh. to be the, um, was it like webcam? So it's all like just oh, okay. two characters, so it's... I edited it, so I, I'm just cutting between, like, either his view or her view, or, like, uh, if on Skype, you've got the little corner person. Oh, sure. So, like, entire scenes look like there's no editing, but there are lots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lots yeah. of hidden edits. So, it was actually, it looks simple. It was quite difficult, and uh, so I've been dying to talk about it with people. Um, so, yeah, lots of fluid morphs, lots of, lots of weird tricks I had to employ, and a movie that has lots of visual effects that doesn't look like there are any and it's it's out now on itunes and amazon and i had a lot of so fun. it's face to face face to face face to face face to face okay <laughs> i thought there was more faces in there no. just, okay. just two of them just the okay. two just the two and yeah it's just um pretty much just the the two characters in their lives it's teenagers so it's a teen movie but there's heavy stuff and uh the female character wants to get the the male character have to have friends, and they're across country. So, hmm. Mm. Hmm. I'll have to check it out. Thank yeah, you. yeah. I'll have to check it out. <laughs> uh, we'll throw a link uh, somewhere in there, or John will throw a link. I say we. Yeah. Mean no, you I'm mean just, me? Like, looking <laughs> at John, like, hey, we'll throw a John. We'll throw a link, and right, John, right, John, right. John, we really appreciate all of your internet yeah. masterness. John's the best. Sure. John's great. <laughs> He's just, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, dude. Could some of you learn how to code, please. <laughs> <laughs> Simple HTML, folks. I do what I can. <laughs> Just very little. <laughs> A little brackets BR, please. <laughs> Coders would get that joke. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so that's uh, where we've been doing. Wow, wow. Blah, 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 blah. Now we're going to move into today's movie. Uh, you need to do that for transitions from now on. Yeah. Just. Just <laughs> Uh, Kong back. Skull Island. Kong. 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 Skull Island. Yeah. <laughs> nice Star Trek reference. Yes. Kong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish somebody did that in this movie. Um, so this movie came out earlier this year. Uh, I didn't really prep anything because I didn't think I had to. It did well. It's one of the few movies this year that has done well. Because uh, apparently this is the worst year in the box office in the past 25 years. Is which, it? I, yeah. Really? It is... The worst year. No movie is making money. But this one did. Uh, this one did. Wonder Woman did. End of list. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. So Spider-Man monk, did okay. uh, apes, giant apes, and women. Yeah. That's uh, what succeeds at the box office. Everybody remember that. Yeah. Spider-Man that, uh, disappoints. It's uh, kind of amazing. Apes small apes, women. like regular size apes, women. they don't do very well anymore. No. Mm. Nope. They're just, just not, not big enough. checks in would not do well today. <laughs> nope. yeah. Not unless it had a shared universe thing with like... <laughs> Babe or something. With Babe and like Andre the Seal. <laughs> and then those like seals from uh, Finding Dory. Ooh. I would so watch this movie. Oh my God, you guys. Guys, we need, so we need, many good ideas. We, we got to edit this out. We got to edit this out because I'm like 30 pages into this draft. <laughs> uh, so before we get too far into Kong Skull Island, so far we've gone nowhere, uh, we need to do a breakdown, <laughs> breakdown, breakdown. All right, Justine, did you, uh, did you watch the, uh, the preview one that I sent you? 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you have a little bit of an idea of what you're you're signed up for right now. Yeah, it's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> True that. Uh, it's not that bad. You'll do fine. <laughs> Everyone does fine. Even when they don't. Uh, okay, so 30 seconds for the entire day of Kong's Island. You ready to go? Yeah. Are you going to give me a countdown or are you just going to say go? I'm just going to say go! That was it. <laughs> Well, it's 1973, and John Goodman's like, hey, monsters are alive. Let's go to this island. So they go to Skull Island and uh, assemble the Avengers, Samuel L. Jackson, bring everybody. And he's in the military after Vietnam. And there are lizard monsters, and there's John C. Riley, And uh, Samuel L. Jackson develops a personal vendetta against Kong, but he gets saved by Tom Hiddleston. But Kong ends up saving them, and then they get off the island, and then there are sequels. Wow. Damn. <laughs> I did not think you were going to make yeah. that. It felt like you were losing it there yeah, for a yeah. second. I did lose it for a second. <laughs> she pulled Legit. it together. Yeah, you did. Yeah. All right. That works. Okay. Where do we want to start in this thing now that we all know the exact plot? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we could start by talking about this is. The Japanese version of King Kong. It is. This is not the American original version from the 20s? 30s. 30s. Um, he's very much an ape man, like as you quoted yesterday, I believe. Yeah, he, he's a definitely way more humanoid ape yeah. than yeah. the normal King he's Kong, gigantic, who was a, just a big which fucking Which was kind of creepy with him, like, whenever, I don't know, when he had, like, walking away shots, I was like, ew, ape butt. Yeah, oh yeah, there's a lot of ape ass in this movie. <laughs> I mean, it's a toned ass, okay? It is what toned. Is it? He works out. It definitely works out. But yeah. like, I felt like I was, you know, intruding on his private time. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I really wonder how form fitting that like the mocap suit on Toby Kibble was, because uh, I imagine we got a lot of his actual man. butt. Now I'm imagining like stumbling on Kong taking a piss, <laughs> just like creating a lake <laughs> or a new mountain if he's pooping. <laughs> yeah, yes. he's pooping. Oh my god! Why don't they ever find giant poop on the I island? Know. Oh. <laughs> He, you know what? He is a very discreet monkey. Thank you. That's what I thought how it was going to start out. They're going to run into giant monkey poop. Giant poop. <laughs> They're going to get stuck. Oh, yeah. Could you imagine if he threw his poop at them? Oh, <laughs> That's how he took out the first helicopter. Oh, you suffocated from poop. That's a way to go. It's Incoming! <laughs> Basically, <laughs> it hits the helicopter. The helicopter hits the side of the mountain and it just sticks there. And then slides down <laughs> before exploding. But yeah. Okay. The shit hit the fucking shit helicopter hit the blades. Fan. <laughs> the fan on top of the helicopter. This oh. is a better movie already. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it is the Japanese version of King Kong. Yes. Uh, this is a precursor to them wanting to create a universe where he's going to go fight Godzilla. Well, there. Yes, I mean the, the next one is just a straight up Godzilla yeah. sequel. They're planning all this. Oh, what is it? Godzilla They're King saying, of Monsters. I think is the everyone's next one got called? a shared universe. Yeah, yeah. they want it because it it makes money. At least for Disney, it makes money. Everyone else is trying. Well, this yeah, this is Warner Brothers, so yeah, um, and so and then it's also very much a war movie. Yeah, they, they somehow snuck, they took a monster movie and snuck in social commentary about Americans and we lost a war, <laughs> and there was yeah. a lot of pro- people had a lot of problems with that at the time, S- namely Samuel Jackson in this movie. He wanted to win. Yeah, mm-hmm. and well. He, his, I don't remember exactly what his character said. It was like, we didn't lose, we gave up. Something like that. Oh, we left it or something. We yeah, abandoned well, it's it. It's true. We did. We ran out of ran out of Vietnam with our tails between our legs. Like, it was not good. Well, yeah. good thing they went and fought a huge fucking monkey after Yeah. This. Well, that's what I appreciated about this movie is that they were, t- they were trying, and in, in my opinion, pretty successfully, to, to make this movie about something more than just a giant monkey. Yeah. It was, it was about, like, these people had real emotional... Like shit, they had to deal yeah. with. And there it, it kind of a- took the like what they started in Godzilla and didn't necessarily succeed with. I like the new Godzilla movie, like, but I like the Godzilla stuff. All the human stuff was really kind of lacking. There um, was no social commentary well, in Godzilla. I don't, but really. I don't even need social commentary. I just need a story I can relate to. And just yeah. watching uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson run around and happen to be in the right place at all times yeah. doesn't. It's not that engaging. Whereas like this one, you actually. For almost every character in the film, you could feel why they were there. They all kind of had some version of motivation. Like it was just like a, a relatable story, not for everyone, but for a lot of them. Yeah, uh, and it's a it's the idea that um, what's his name Adam Wingard. I want to say the guy who has Death Note coming out here a little bit, and he's doing the next Godzilla movie. He talks about how if you want to do these movies right, you have to take them serious, and that's mm-hmm. what I feel they did here. Yeah. Oh yes, there's mm-hmm. one of the things I appreciate about this movie is the level of like 
warmongering and uh, societal desperation that they express yeah. between like the people that love war and the people that hate war and just how you create a situation where you're not prepared. I had a statement in my brain and just left. Uh, but like specifically, like the thing that separates this genre for me is I'm a huge Godzilla fan in general. And Godzilla is the terror we created because it is a representation of the nuclear bomb. Uh, and then King Kong is a terror we feel towards nature. And they capture that in this movie really well of how war happened to Samuel Jackson and he lost. And now he's fighting just the greatest war that man has ever had of man versus nature. And he wants to win because he's like, the ultimate like thing for humanity is to conquer nature. It always has been. We wanted to have the control. We wanted the semblance that we are number one. And he even says it at the end, be like, Kong is not king, man is king, or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something close to that. But the idea that I, I liked about it is not really, I didn't really see it so much as him wanting to take on nature so much it's as not, him. It's like it's, him trying to win the ultimate war. It felt more to me like a revenge. Like he was just so mad. Like yeah. you have to think about how many soldiers he lost in the war he just fought. Yeah. And then this was supposed to be just a very simple, like, escort mission. Oh, and two seconds in, he loses a whole bunch more men. And he sees not a whole army as a fight, but one fucking thing. And he sees it as a fight he can win. So it just turns into this personal vendetta of revenge. Oh, not necessarily man versus nature, but so much as this like, man, like... I see both of that. I see yeah, the I mean, personalness, both kind of there. and then I yeah. see the allegory of humanity in general. Yeah, that's yeah, how he... they introduce his characters. Is he's holding the box of like all of the things of yeah. the the guys that he's lost. So mm -hmm. he he just holds on to that the whole time. Yeah. Not to come away from that, but like, was anybody else really distracted by the Budweiser sitting behind him? I was not. No, oh. <laughs> I don't remember that. I'm sorry. I cannot turn off my job. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I do have that in the, the Defenders show. Where I'm like, ah, Samsung Galaxy S8, the official phone of the Defenders. I mean, they did have it. I do yeah, remember later, the, later on. Uh, yeah, later at the on. end with John C. Riley when he gets he his was beer. Yeah. It's yeah. always a Budweiser. Yes. Yeah. But there was, like, in the scene where he's all depressed about Vietnam and leaving and whatnot, there is a Budweiser right behind his head. Hmm. And it's like, why is that there? But I guess if it doesn't bother anybody else, okay. That's, Didn't even notice it. Yeah. I will say that I noticed uh, the beautifulness of his character introduction. The visuals in this movie are fantastic. With Samuel, yeah. you don't see him first. You see you pull into the back of him, and you have sparks going down the sides of him mm. like flames. Mm -hmm. And then you go to the end of the movie where he's surrounded by flames fighting King Kong. So mm. it's kind of a beautiful tie-in. And they both have um, an interesting shot where they both clench their fists in a very yeah. similar way. It's, yeah. But they're both kind of the same but different. I'm like you. <laughs> <laughs> We're nothing like me. I'm nothing like you. And I, I, it's, it's, it's interesting too. Cause like he used that, what was his name? Chase, ch ch what the guy was up. Chapman. In? Chapman. There you go. He used Chapman as like Chase a pretense, man. but you could tell like he wasn't really, because he was like, it's one guy and numerically you're about to risk the lives of all of these people to save one dude instead of telling that dude to come down to you. You know, and it's because he, it was clearly because he wanted the weapons when he mm -hmm. finds out Chapman's dead. He's like, that doesn't matter. You know, I still want the weapons. That's what I'm going for. But I, I kind of liked how on the nose that was the whole time. Like, yeah. I really appreciate it because everyone in the story kind of goes, well, I guess we have to, he's a good leader. He wants to save his guy. And everyone in the audience is going, no, he's fucking yeah. nuts mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. yeah he mm -hmm. just wants a war. Like, even when he gets the phone call to go on this thing, he's, he's sad that he doesn't have anything to go to when he goes back home. And he gets the phone call and he even says, oh, and thank you. Like, he thanks them to give them another mission before he has to go mm. home. Yeah, I mean, it's that. I mean, they talk about it. We were just talking about Catherine Bigelow, but they do it in like Hurt Locker. Like, it's the guy who does not want to walk away from fighting. And that is Samuel L. Jackson. He yeah. wants to be in a fight. That was all in the last Star Trek movie, too. Yeah. So. Uh, but I, I really like Samuel L. Jackson in this movie. Like, yeah. I. I I like it when he acts. And yeah. I, that sounds really meaner than I want it's it to. It's true. <laughs> but I mean, a lot they of did make him say, hold on to your butts. That's true. Ah! Yeah. Which I appreciate. <laughs> even in the first viewing in the theater, I'm like, ah, it's a callback to Jurassic Park. Well, and to your point, a lot of people don't require that he acts. And it's more yeah. on the people yeah. directing him than himself. Yeah, so it's not really an indictment of him so much as like, yeah. this person actually wanted something out of Samuel L. Jackson, and for that, that's actually good. Yeah, because I mean, a lot of people just want Samuel L. Jackson, and then you get him. Like, that's what the Hitman's bodyguard looks like. And like, that's fine. I mean, I love that script, though. Yeah, I mean, the, I don't think it looks bad. It's just yeah. that I don't know some I mean, people that. hire him to be himself, and that's fine. But I really like Samuel L. Jackson when he's like pushed. But no, but you watch something like this or like uh, Hateful Eight, even if you don't really like Hateful Eight, or but, like, but he's 
he plays different characters, and it's always kind of exciting to see him play a different character. I think so. Oh, he's a great actor. Yeah, he is. Um, the other actor I want to talk about in this thing is John C. Riley. Mm-hmm. I don't think this movie works without John C. Riley. I, mean, I, I know that's a bold mm-hmm. claim, but I, I would agree with that. And I didn't, yeah. I didn't actually realize he was in the movie. I didn't look at anything. I just rented the movie you and watched. You never saw any of the trailers? No. Oh, I saw, like, amazing. oh, Kong Skull Island. When and I, I, was s- like, I wasn't taken by the name of the movie. So I was like, I, I'm not going to watch these trailers. See, when I saw the trailer and I saw that shot of John C. Riley holding a samurai sword, I'm like, that movie's going to suck. Like, I really want it to be good, well, but there's no way it's going to work. It looked, it looked in the trailers as if he was playing his character from that weird TV show he does. You guys know that TV show he does? No. Fuck, what's it called? There's a TV show where it does like this the whole time. Is, it, is that Tim, Tim and Eric or something? No. no. I or think it's similar to No, but it's not Adult Swim, isn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah. This, it's this weird show. And, and he was acting like I thought like that's the character he was doing for, because that's what the only parts they played in, in the trailers were him just being his weird, like awkward, can't function. Oh, yeah. God, what's the name of that? I'm going to look the name I of that show no up. But I was, I was hooked twofold on this movie. One, because I'm a huge fan of this of kaiju in general. Of kaijus and just the the monsters universe. Sure. Uh, and then in the trailer for this, when he just does his little laugh, and he's like, ah, we're all going to die, or you're all going to die here. <laughs> I'm like, I was hooked right there because it, there was seriousness and kind of desperation within that humor. Yeah, a little. I mean, well, it's John like, C. Riley. He's yeah. a great actor. He's a great actor. Yeah. And he was able to deliver that line in a really good way that it wasn't just slapstick. <laughs> But I think I think when the for me he was when it kind of saved moments where my patience started to wear thin for this movie, and that's there's some elements of that where like where there's all these awesome moments. There's also these somewhat character building moments or the slow moments that really start to wear. Like, they started to wear on me patience wise, where it was like we're not getting to the monkey, like we gotta get back to the monkey, we gotta get back to the monsters. And it's like okay, we've got this all set up. So like for me, having him on there was a a surprise, but then like it really kept me hooked. And that's really him, his personality and his charisma. Uh, this, the show that's called Check It Out with Dr. Steve. <laughs> and he, Dr. Steve. And he just like... Well, you know. Like, he's just like, check it out. And he, it's, it's fucking... It's, it's actually hilarious because it's so absurd. Well, and his character brought more exposition. I mean, oh, yes. yeah, he just did big exposition dumps. But yeah. It's like, yeah but I thought they did it well. Scene. Like, it's an exposition scene, but it made sense organically. Yeah. Because it was with There's the journey visual. of the other characters. There was yeah. a cool visual thing. There was the, you know, but then you have, like, that the inner voice going, like, why would you spend so much time painting these pictures over, like, 30 rocks? Like, can't you just walk to the wall back there instead of... It's you art. Have to, yeah. It's yeah. art, Brian. They look like and, a very creative uh, pers- uh, society. Yeah. But, but they look plus, like a very bored society. Yeah, exactly. No, they, they, they're, they, bored. They, they're bored and they found someone who did it better and copied and pasted it. Oh, <laughs> callback. <laughs> but yeah, if you've got like a <laughs> if you've got like a shitload of years and not much going on, you're hiding from lizard aliens. Yeah, you can't really you go You know, that's the story of my much. life, damn it. <laughs> you'd like a to shit go full out, of years. but if you go out, you might get stepped on by a spider. That, oh. was, that was cool. That was cool and that was also an grotesque. Ant. I think it was an ant. No, that was a spider. No, that was a spider. Okay. Did we ever see any of the ants? No, about? no we didn't, didn't see the ants. ants. No, that's no, I that's assumed he was talking about that when he was talking about ants. Okay, uh, I'm assume. glad we didn't, just because it was like it left it in the air of just like, oh, that that Sequel. sound that's a bird is not a bird. That's something more horrific but that we haven't seen, seen yet. If you've seen the other movies back in the day, you know what those ants are. Mm-hmm. If you're like me, stop motion. No. Well, yes. <laughs> if any of you guys want to stick around and watch uh, Godzilla Son, we like the answer in that movie. Never. Okay, fine. <laughs> Is that where Mario kidnaps Kong? And no, that's <laughs> when that's when Baby Godzilla can blow bubbles by going. Mwah! He's it's cute. A, he's not. <laughs> This sounds terrible. It's the worst. It's great. <laughs> but I like these type of movies. I do too, but we can call a spade a spade. That movie is fucking horrible. No, it's great. Oh, There's God. an Amazon woman that bonds with baby Godzilla, okay? Boo. No, actually, it does sound kind of cool. <laughs> uh, but that's the other thing with the monsters in this movie versus um, the Peter Jackson King Kong. I know Brian is a diehard fan of that film, and it's I fantastic. enjoy it. So long. But there's such a deluge of monsters in that movie where it's almost a little overwhelming. I like how the monsters in this movie are more. There's not as many of them, at least in the way that they are yeah. shown. But they're there's still more. always present. There, are, wherever just, they go, there are a form of monsters, but they're not constantly being attacked the entire. But the scale, time. like for me, the problem with that is like that month they never scaled the monsters properly for me. I feel like because no? when they got to the big one, I was like, "Wait, hold on, I have to rewind a second. 
The is he the same size? Is he the same size as the other ones? Much yeah. bigger it's than yeah. Bigger. And also, they forgot their legs. Like, <laughs> those they things don't legs. have legs. No, they, they have two well, arms and like a tail. They slither. Yeah. yeah, it was it was a weird design, but it was also like oh, not an design, interesting design. The, I liked the design. I thought the it was the very skull different. crawlers, whatever they're called, yeah. I thought they're fucking awesome. Stupid name. Yeah, stupid. I agree. Stupid name, but I thought they were. No, creepy. Never said that decent. out loud before. <laughs> yeah, it was so funny. But like, I I like the their mouths just oh, look God, fucking horrifying, uh, uh. right? <laughs> like, I I love the design of these things. Yeah. Like, the that's one of the things I've really enjoyed out of both Godzilla and now Kong Scott Island. Like the new monster designs, I think are fucking awesome. Yeah. The Mudos and Godzilla were killer, and like this was like and it's sick. really like, it's really awesome. hard to come up with a monster we haven't seen before. It like is. you ever tried to yeah. write a movie with a monster in it? It's like every time you're like, oh, not. that's a good idea. Wait, no, that's basically a werewolf. That's a good idea. Oh no, that's basically a lizard. Uh, and then you, yeah. But like this one, I agree. The scaling's a little weird, but I still kind of don't mind like the mm-hmm. i think the the smaller one sh- could have been a little smaller but man eh, whatever i don't you know still have john c Riley there to remind us that's the big one mm. right right and i, I think without him <laughs> <laughs> I think I mean, with, he literally says it yeah <laughs> yeah no i, I think it's, it's mostly a scaling problem just because like when they get into the fight and they're actually fighting it I'm, like i like how they shot that where you could actually see what was going on that helped mm-hmm. and he was threatening but i was like so was the one in the you know gas graveyard thing mm-hmm. that they were in so was the one like they yeah, all seem to be the same. To humans it wasn't threatening to Kong. This mm, one was threatening to Kong. Point. Scale wise, yeah. 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 It just I feel like we maybe the fact that they didn't have a compare from the humans to it nearly as much as they did. Like yeah, we, it was we much could scale more it to open Kong. Land. Yeah. yeah that's a good and point. when Kong is so far back, it's like, well, he's a small monkey. All right, in this guys. Shot. Next time we go to a monster island, we all got to stand in a line and mm-hmm. compare. Mm-hmm. I think it's doable. <laughs> <laughs> But you get uh, to fight this one because you're similar size, and you fight that one. Yeah, like yeah. Just kind okay. of going back to John C. Riley though. I did, and and the fact that we were talking about the social commentary. Like, I actually that's another thing I loved about his character is that when the the movie opens with him at war with this guy, and then they became friends, and it's like obviously this friendship meant a lot to him, mm-hmm. and it's just another reflect. Like every, I love it when a movie keeps its theme going, and and so every piece of this movie is about reminding us that like we don't have to fight. You know, except mm-hmm. Kong had to fight the lizard thing because they can, they're not going to be friends. And or maybe so, they will. Maybe well, that's the sequel. So they find out, oh, we could be friends he's this whole the, time. He's the hero that they needed, you know? Yeah. But there's so many, like, Boo. side, like, things in the dialogue. Yeah. Yeah. There's so There's layers to this dialogue. Even when they meet him, and then he's like, oh, did we win the war? Yeah. And then Hiddleston's like, well, which one? And he's like, oh, well, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> like, immediately, like, it's just like... Humans they, have a problem with war is the message of this movie when you get down to it. They really uh, had, like, I think having John C. Riley in the movie helped because there was, before he showed up, they had some, like, the humor was kind of like, okay, what are you doing here? You're serious. You have these message, you have these themes going on, but then you're making these jokes and you're like, hold on to your butts. And then, mm. then he shows up and it's like, I, okay, I get what this, what they're doing. And yeah, I mean, if, if, if I had a complaint that's a slight one, that they would have set him up sooner or something to fix that kind of tonal shift that I wasn't quite ready for because I, I knew nothing going into this. So huh. I was I mean, kind of like back and forth a little bit and a little bit like it took me a while to get into it and then mm-hmm. he showed up and he, then I was. Mm-hmm. Here's my argument against it is that I don't think it's a tonal shift necessarily. I just don't think you were expecting this tone. Maybe. and I, they, I It's a very serious film. It is a very serious film. They, they yeah. have a lot of imagery from previous war movies and they have this really great setup like someone put Full Metal Jacket in this movie. It's yeah. Full Metal Jacket. Apocalypse, it's Apocalypse now. now. They put all it's, these movies yeah. in there yeah. and then it's like, ha, 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 we're all going to die. I'm like, oh, wait, hold on. So it's like, it was weird. It's almost like they just kind of surprised me with it. And maybe that's not bad. I think if we bad, learned anything like, from this and from my experience with Free Fire, it's yeah. like, watch the trailer. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> right. But then, like, there, there's moments that I feel like I needed to be surprised at, too. Like, just, yeah. they would have showed the great, the best shots, I feel like, of this. They do show mm-hmm. a lot of them. They do yeah. show some really good shots True. 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 Um, in the trailer. But changing gears from John C. Riley for a little while, I want to talk about how this movie handles death. Because I think it's really interesting. It's kind of like war. Yeah. Okay, this I mean, person's dead now. We still have to, things to do. <laughs> we have very main characters, or people they set up as main characters who just get offed, and the movie spends no time with it. Yeah, yeah. which I'm really I th- surprised about Chapman. Yeah, Chapman is literally like he's there and then he's not. Which we, really, we he had his he had his deep Lucy moment. Yeah, yeah, but we also we got like in the beginning when he was first introduced, we got to see like what his plans after the war were. So it's yeah. like we were set up to think he was going to be one of our main guys, and then wait, what? Yeah, and it they gave you reasons to care. Yeah. yeah, which I thought was, and then they give you reasons to care, but then they don't 
like honor that yeah, after they die, which, which is, is kind of great. It's it's a really kind of weird move. I, I, think, I agree. It's because that's war. Yeah. Or like the the doctor guy. I fr- I don't remember which one. John Goodman. Not no. The, oh, the, no, the, one of the guys in blue. With the f- oh, oh, the guy right, who loses yeah. his arm. Yeah, where he gets sliced by the little pterodactyl things. Yeah. Oh. And, well, and, he's gone now. I liked him. Uh, I that's liked that. him too. <laughs> it's like, oh, there he goes. Sparks, that's you talking about Sparks Nevada. I don't know. Oh, you guys don't do thrilling adventure hour. Okay. No. Let's he plays Sparks Nevada. But it is oh, just he does. Like, okay. Yeah. But I kind of had like the Homer Simpson like, oh, he's just a little airborne. He's okay. He's okay. He's just a- oh, he's okay. Oh, he lost his arm. <laughs> Well, that, I, that, like, that, I kind he's of, gone. I <laughs> love that shot because I remember when we first saw those uh, little pterodactyl bird things. Yeah. yeah. You saw their noses and you're like, well, that thing looks a little vicious. And then you just see him nose dive straight through his arm. I'm like, oh, that's what they oh, use Oh, you're talking for. about that guy. Oh. Yeah. oh. Well, I was just kind of expecting it because I was like, okay, we've got way too many characters. Let's yeah. Start right, off. right. I kept on being like, okay, everybody's just going to start getting Jurassic Parked. Because <laughs> I, uh, I don't watch a lot of monster movies, so I have yeah. seen Jurassic Park, so I was comparing it to Jurassic Park. Of course, Park yeah. A yeah. lot. <laughs> <laughs> they even say hold on to your butts it yeah. works yeah. yay I get, I get the reference that's not, that's not Sparks Nevada the other guy the white guy is Sparks Nevada oh right 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 um, oh wait so the other dog the one in blue that's white the white guy yeah I think of him as the the blue, husband the blue white guy I thought that's who you were talking about because I think of him as the husband from uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Oh, oh yeah he is the husband yeah. of Brooklyn Nine-Nine. okay 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 yeah between all of us we Tangent, figured it out honey, I'm <laughs> sorry that's fine but no but he's also Sparks Nevada I'm just um, I also like the way that John Goodman gets off. Yeah. Again, no, I, it's just gone. Don't care one, anymore. Because uh, I watched it and like I've seen them. We saw it twice in theaters and then uh, I watched it uh, half at work and then half at home. And then I'm like, I get to the half at home. I'm like, wait, wasn't John Goodman in this a while ago? Like, <laughs> when did he die? Like, I completely just forgot when it happened because it's just so nonchalant. He just gets picked off and then the movie doesn't really bring him up again. No. Yeah. And, and that, he's and like it, the inciting incident. He's the yeah. main reason we're there. <laughs> right. And that's kind of, at, at first it was like, distracting in a bad way but then like i've warmed to that moment because it's such a great sequence after that with yeah. the yeah. flashing i like that device strobe. yeah yeah but it was so oh, yeah. unexpected that was awesome yeah and just that was another reference to jurassic park actually was it like when in the third one when they eat a cell phone oh right, oh, right, right. right. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. but like even with like how it compares to deep blue sea samuel l jackson sets that up doesn't he like that whole premise and then he actually gets off in his speech and then like john goodman just step like makes a makes a goof yeah and you're like he says, he, and when he, basically he's saying, "Oh shit!" I'm like, "Why is he saying he's gone?" I'm like, oh, "What? Yeah, what? Great. He's the star?" No, yeah. he wasn't. Okay. Uh, yeah, and the then stars are very clearly Tom Hiddleston and Brie Larson. Which, by the way, yeah. y'all, I'm not a. I mean, I've never really gotten why people are in love with Tom Hiddleston. He was a babe in this movie. Uh, <laughs> you know how the, they again, spent a lot of time making him and Brie Larson look good. They look. It's so a good. big yeah. difference between like because <laughs> that was what they were there for. In that was it. Like, Jurassic yeah. World, like, what's the point? Yeah. Yeah. In Jurassic there, there World, <laughs> we have Chris Pratt playing the manliest man in the world, and in this movie, it's Tom Hiddleston. Oh, playing Oh, Tom the Hiddleston manliest. would stomp his oh, ass. He oh, was such sure. a better manly man than he was, Chris Pratt. <laughs> he was nicer. Yeah, he was nicer. He and actually he respected Brie like Larson. Yeah, he pointed and that's with his whole hand. He throws him the sword, which, by the way, I'm not sure that would work in real life, but whatever. He throws him the sword, and then he's just like chop, and he chop, chop, chop. It's so good. Hero. <laughs> God, yeah. Tom Hilston. Yeah. But, but again, <laughs> what is his character there for? Oh, he's there to be pretty. Yeah. He's yeah. There. Very and pretty. he's a tracker. Sure. What is yeah. he track? Yeah. Fucking nothing. He tracks a little <laughs> on bit. My, on my roleplay message boards, <laughs> I'm a tracker too, right? The ladies is what yeah. he tracks. Yeah. yeah. But also, John C. Riley knew where everything was too. Yeah. yeah. He, Tom Hiddleston really has no it's, use in this movie whatsoever. Yeah. Either it's, a really cool sword <laughs> sequence. <laughs> And looking good. It's basically... <laughs> so, he also stands up to Samuel L. Jackson at one point. He does. He does, but so does John C. Riley. Yep, yep. And so does Brie Larson. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, does Brie Larson. It's basically... And so does his own soldiers. <laughs> yeah. Everyone yeah, does true. everything for Tom Hiddleston, oh, okay, but okay. they can't look as good as Tom Hiddleston. No. It's basically it's that... It's hard uh, to look as good as Tom Hiddleston. It really is. I really yeah. literally never thought that until I saw this movie, and now I'm like, oh, I get it. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Look at that torso. <laughs> Tight <laughs> shirt. Mm. Mm. <laughs> but speaking of but going to Brie Larson, like that's one thing I actually really liked about this because usually Kong movies are about like the monkey is like wants to oh, fuck, fuck the girl yeah. or whatever. Uh, yeah. I don't. It's gross and weird. Blondes. Um In this movie, Just they Palmer. they like sort of made a, a reference to that without it feeling gross. It was yeah. more yeah. like she was nice to one of the creatures, so he was like, "Oh, cool, you're awesome," and then wanted to protect her. It wasn't disgusting, mm-hmm. kind of sexual. Although no. after he got attacked by that Mudo and or not by the Mudo, but by the uh, skull crawler, what do you want to call it? And his hand went inside. I really feel like he should have pulled it out and just had like a bloody mess and went. Ooh, and just I might have clenched a little too hard. <laughs> this makes me uncomfortable. 
I really, Ooh. I don't. That's the one thing where I'm like, I don't really understand how that worked because he's fighting the Mudo, holding her in his right hand. Yeah, and, and then not he's, crushing her. Yeah, yeah. not <laughs> crushing her, and then the and then the skull crusher or whatever. Crawler, Gets you a monkey who can eats, do both, right? Eats his hand, so his hand's inside of it. And with then Brie some, Larson with in Brie that Larson, hand. And then somehow he's able to grab the guts of the thing, pull the guts out of its body. With Brie Larson with still Brie in With Brie Larson hand. in his hand and not hurt her. Like I said, he should have opened his hand to like a bloody mess. Yeah, because how oops. did he clench the guts oh, without sorry. clenching her? He's really good with his hand. Uh, she wakes up. I had this. I had the weirdest dream, guys, that I was in a vagina. <laughs> Like yeah. that, that's one of the few moments where I was just like, wait, what? Yeah. Again, like, I could let go of a lot of things. It's a monster movie, but that one made no sense. I'm still kind of totally fine with it. Because it really <laughs> yeah. just, like, the movie just said, fuck it at that moment. And yeah. I really appreciate it when movies just go, ah, fuck also, it. Also, grabbing a chain with a fucking, like, boat motor on it and using it to, Dude, oh, my God, it was so daredevil. I love the moment where you, you get to see Kong think in this movie. And it's great seeing him be like, oh, chains. <laughs> Reference to the 30s movie. Yes. Yeah. Oh, look. Hey, there's a really big thing on the end of this chain. I can use that. Like you don't get Ke- you really don't get Kong thinking very much in most of his movies. He's just reacting. Well, yeah, this one definitely played up his intelligence a lot more. Yeah. But still, when he swings that thing around, I really wanted the music cue for Wrecking Ball to come in. Because <laughs> <laughs> it would be awesome. It would have timed actually perfectly. I think. <laughs> it's not quite the era. I know it came out like 40 years later, but still. Hmm. I'd have been okay with Miley Cyrus that. screaming, I came yeah. like a wrecking ball as he hits him with a- that thing. <laughs> It'd be fucking awesome. With what they were spending on the music, I would have been fine with that anachronism right there. Just oh, like- yeah. I mean, Knight's Tale did it and did it well, so whatever. Yeah, but Knight's Tale was a thematic choice. Yeah. And this would be too, just yeah. the one time, and it totally didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> but there'd be one guy in the audience going, yeah! yeah. <laughs> and that would be you. <laughs> and then one person at home being like, oh, you interesting. Love Wrecking Ball. You can run to it, you can cry <laughs> to it, you can fight monsters to it. It's perfect. Uh, but the other thing I wanted to bring up, I'm not sure, did anybody else watch the Blu ray? Oh. I watched the HD version, which. There was no a UHD. Was the <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so on the Blu-ray, there's special features, obviously, um, and one of them was all about Brie Larson's photography, which I thought was a really interesting thing that the director oh. did. Which was uh, the props department came up to him like, "So this is the rubber camera we're going to use." He's like, "No, no, no, I want a real one." Like, mm-hmm. "Well, getting a working camera from the '70s is very difficult." He goes, "And." <laughs> <laughs> A bazillion dollar movie. Yeah. Find uh, a way. So they went and got one and he said, I want film in it at all times and I want Brie Larson to be taking photos throughout the entire movie and then she wants to then have her develop them herself, which she was on board for. Because so, Brie Larson's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. So yeah. if you there's a special uh, feature on there where it goes through all the photography she took throughout the movie and it's fucking great. Really? Wow. They didn't all come out blurry because yeah. like, she's in the helicopter. I'm like, that's blurry. That's blurry. <laughs> it's uh, but like there's like they look like wartime photography because they don't shoot any like the behind the scenes stuff. It's just the actors in the thing. Mm-hmm. So it they're all dressed up in their full makeup and garb and like Tom Hiddleston on like a helicopter and like. It looks really fucking were cool. Were any of those stills that they would showed in the movie? Yes, the actual, a lot they of were them. the literal oh, stills great. that she took. They're the ones that she took. Yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. That's really like cool. Like it's this little thing between the director and Brie Larson that like I'm so glad they actually spent the time making this one like I think oh, it was like cool. five minute. I mean special that just feature. shows more like the director caring, cares, yeah. like yeah. detail. And it was like if you get a chance, I'm sure it's on YouTube or something like that, but I'd look it up. Like it's a really cool little behind the scenes thing. Although that was my one. <laughs> That was my one thing about like the line at the end where they're like, no one can know about this. And she's like, we're not going to tell him. You just took fucking professional photos of the... What you... Also, how are you going to explain all these dudes not returning from this mission? They died in like, Vietnam. There's a problem with this. Well, they, War, founded, a com- <laughs> they founded a company yeah. called Adobe. I mean, that's where that's where good cover-ups come. Like, they just died at in Vietnam. They don't really talk about them going mm. to this other island. I guess that's why it's glad that... I'm glad they there's had the no like, post credit scene <laughs> to sort of at least... <laughs> do something yeah. with that which yeah. I wouldn't have seen but I was just busy doing something on my computer and I let the credits roll no. oh. Oh. I, did, I guess I would, I would have thought to have mentioned it to you if I had been Oops. thinking I didn't do that it's like such a great post credit when we went to the theater and everyone waited well, like, I could tell who were my other like fellow monster movie people because they just stood up and cheered the moment they started the slideshow showing like Yidra! Rodan and yeah. Idra and all this other stuff I'm like yes <laughs> universe <laughs> okay so then for those of us who missed out what what, what was that oh post? it's they go back to Monarch uh the the two nerds the two nerds bring Brie Larson and Tom Hiddleston back to Monarch and they're like nice. alright guys so we did all this just so you know there's a lot of evidence for a shit ton of other monsters. There are more. <laughs> and they just go through 
the monster verse. Marty, we have to go back. <laughs> how much cooler would it have been if they just brought out a little, uh, a little like box and two little women walked out? Mothra. Mothra. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been amazing. That would have been the weirdest post credits <laughs> tag. <laughs> Just so you know, the next one is going to be a giant moth. <laughs> and it's got these little two sidekick girls that can summon it. Yeah, it's really weird. <laughs> Mothra is a weird We monster. carry them around in a purse. <laughs> uh, wow, yeah. Do we, you guys follow this verse at all? Oh my God, we so many movie We're nights. shaking should, our heads. <laughs> you should watch Godzilla vs. Mothra if this, you this seen verse it. is our, a weird fucking movie. <laughs> this verse is our first. <laughs> Man, you are on fire today with the dad jokes. Someone put me out. <laughs> Please. You're so punny, John. Uh, um. But back to Brie Larson. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it's great to see her in this movie because yep. she's yeah. she looks great in the 70s. I can't wait to see her as Captain Marvel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like Can looks... they make Captain Marvel in the 70s because she looks great in the well, 70s? No, they're doing the 90s, though. Yeah. I don't know if she'll look as good in the 90s. We'll find out. I but think Brie Larson looks hair good everywhere. The I'm hair sure was not fine. as fluttery in the 90s. That's, well, well she rocks a mohawk. It depends. Yeah, I was yeah. about to say if they're going to do the mohawk. Yeah, I Ooh. hope so. But... That would be daring for Marvel. And you were saying they did they never made her the damsel in this movie. She was very active the whole time. She was always in the thick of the battle. And the, there's so many representations of her camera being like a weapon. See, that like, was she's that was, fighting with photography, guys. That was the only thing I didn't like. Was just kinda like, all right, we're getting ready to go. And she's like, Yeah, me too. Like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I had a moment during that where I was like, Are you for real? Yeah. <laughs> She has the power of screen capture to protect her, okay? Yeah. <laughs> well, it steals your soul, so of course. <laughs> and even with the other um, woman in the film, she doesn't get too much screen time, the Asian chick. Yeah. But when she is there, she's active too. And she, she feels like a, a real person. Yeah, she's, yeah. Not, yeah. she's not just standing on the side going, like, ooh, I'm small and weak. But and no, he, she's very... She, and I like that it, that it looked like... It <laughs> looked well, that like would be, but that's what like, a lot of like women like her could have been yeah. portrayed, and no, she was very active. But I also like that they were implying kind of a romance between her and uh, Courtney uh, B... Uh, I always want to say Courtney B. Hawkins because of Sophie B. Hawkins. I don't know. Um, but like, uh, um, there was almost like an implied romance there, but it was never yeah. explicitly yeah. stated. It was, it was a little like, flirtation. Yeah. Like when he tried to open the jar for her and ended up cutting himself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what, a doof, what a doofus. <laughs> uh, is there anybody we haven't talked about or anything that we haven't hit that we feel that we should? Uh, the guy from Diamond Line never sang a song, which I, I was disappointed. He doesn't sing a lot. It's really I like should. Bad. There we was, should always sing. We should talk about Dear Billy, the guy, who, the, the, the guy who basically Samuel L. Jackson goes after. I liked that thing that they had. You mean Kong? No, uh, well, he played Kong Corey too. Hawkins. Sorry, guys. No, the the the, the soldier who the, was by himself and got eaten by one of the yeah, skull he, things. He, he is Kong. He did the mocap. He did the mocap. Oh, he Kong. did the mocap. Yeah, yeah. that's Toby Kibble. That's uh, he was also Kubo or Kobo in uh the Planet of the Apes movies. Oh, that's really cool. We and don't get also... to see his actual face very often. That actually makes the scene where he watches Kong fight the squid in more interesting to me. I didn't yeah, know that. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, he's watching himself. But the, the thing I was referring to is the the in joke for them. The soldiers, oh, where they're Billy. all like the deal, they're all deal, dear Billy ying, yeah. <laughs> to yeah. verb it up, uh, I liked that moment. It was everything else with their soldiers and the army was all stylized and from other movies. Yeah, this felt unique. Uh, so really quick, John was just talking about uh, the Dear Billy aspect of this. We're going to move on. I uh, did not dump the card before we recorded, so we ran out of space. Uh, so there's my awkward. We I solved everything again. ever. Essentially, yeah. for 10 minutes, we were praising the director, who uh, was a Columbia alum. He yes. was a Columbia alum. But so basically what we were talking about that we lost was that how good he did. He did an amazing job. Yeah. He did. I really, really respect and look forward to everything he's doing. Uh, you knew what his next project. Yeah, is. he's attached to. I believe if IMDb is to be trust. IMDb is to be trusted. He is attached to Stars My Destination, but that's a project that's been around this town since the '90s, trying to get made. It's based on a novel. It's a really difficult adaptation. Uh, I personally, anybody's listening, I want to do it. <laughs> um, so bad. Like it's my dream project. It, is it kind of like uh, like Watchmen was, where it's just like everyone wants to, but nobody knows how. It's, it's mm. about a character who's your hero is like the most anti-hero of anti-heroes. Like he actually, there's a rape scene in the novel. Mm. And Yeesh. so I think the difficulty is in trying to balance how to make him heroic. In the novel, it works, and I, 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 I actually wrote it on spec one day just to get it out of my system. Right. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I did it. I mean, I don't know if everybody else would feel that way, 
But um, I think that, it, and there's a lot of other issues with it too, but there's a lot of things in, in the novel that are a bit problematic for a film adaptation. But the story is so amazing. And, and it's the reason this guy is a good choice for it is because it is a very spectacle. It's a very big story. It's, it spans all over, like, in space and all over Earth and Mars and all these other places. But at its core, it's about, like, the nature of humanity and it's about, like, what we're capable of as human beings. And so uh, this guy clearly can pull this that This seems off. really in his wheelhouse. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the th- other thing that I want to mention specifically about Jordan is this movie, to me, when pitched, feels like a property-keeping film. Like those ones where it's like, I'm going to lose the rights to this film if I don't make a, a version of it in the next year and a half. It'll lo- That's how we got, like, Amazing Spider-Man. That's how we got, like, a lot of movies that are just kind of okay. And this one, as pitched, feels like that to me. It feels kind of like, uh, well, we don't want him to remake King Kong, but we got to introduce him to fight Godzilla. Uh, Kong Skull Island. Just make it about the island. And it just feels like this really kind of like haphazard, just like, eh, fuck it. But well, they- did they have to do that so Universal wouldn't do it? Because isn't a Universal. Because I know Universal is doing their traditional monster rehashing right, yeah. thing. I'm not sure why or if it was even the case for this one, if it was like a property keeping thing, but that's how it's pitched. That's what it sounded like to me. Like it sounded kind of like a lazy, like, well, we want a Kong movie in theaters. We'll just throw this one out there. And what could have been a very lazy money making special effects fiesta turned into like a legit film. And I think that's really impressive. He's like what I appreciated him about is the same sort of thing that uh, Patty Jenkins was talking about when she was doing Wonder Woman about how we have such a problem with these genre films about sincerity yeah. and not being afraid of it. And I loved how she brought the sincerity into Wonder Woman. I enjoyed how much he brought sincerity into this film. Like, it's a monster movie. It could have just been about people dying from monsters. But it was definitely, like we discussed, about war, about obsession, about how people handle survival situations. It was about so much more than just a giant monkey. Yeah. Well, and maybe that's kind of why it's difficult at first to embrace because we have so much not sincerity we have such a problem in just our society in yeah. general right now about sticking to a problem and fixing it and not just trying to ignore it but even even to what we were talking about a couple of weeks ago with uh wings where there was like the, the men being sincere and like loving as friends mm-hmm. there is hints of that in this movie yeah. and when you guys were talking about that that kind of reminded me of that and i was starting to think about that some more and i was like those guys are friendly and emotional with each other and there's no question there's no awkwardness and the and the only person who is fighting against that samuel jackson's character ultimately his doom is you could read that it's because of that his masculinity yeah yeah and like everyone else is kind of not doing that they're not following him in that way and it was i don't know i'm I'm liking this more (laughs) now that we talk about it but that really stands out to me now actually (laughs) I kind of agree. There was a, a slight push after it came out because this movie did well. It didn't do as well as I think they were hoping it was going to do because that's the story of the year. Uh, <laughs> but there was uh, a slight push to do the story of John C. Riley's character and the uh, the Japanese guy who he crashed on the island with as like a prequel to this movie. I would totally watch that. Yeah. I'd watch yeah. it too. Yeah. Like I just, I mean, even if they don't get back John C. Riley, if they just get two they get actors, comic book. Yeah, uh, well, they're doing a comic book right now that's like the story of the island. Um, if it's not out now, it comes out so, somewhat soon. It's on the ads for it's on the Blu-ray. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't know about it. Uh, but the story of those two guys, like the fact that they, they show up and they try to kill each other immediately. Uh, they basically almost cut off John C. Riley's hands with a sword. Like they're really into murdering each How other. How did he treat those wounds, Ugh. I wonder? Ugh. There's no antiseptic Maybe on Kong the island. Did. Kong did it. Oh, Kong. Kong urine. Kong. It heals <laughs> all wounds. Okay, so it's like Neosporin? Yeah, or? he just pees Neosporin. <laughs> He's There's the protector. <laughs> yeah, he is. And this conversation has gone full circle because this is how we began it with Kong's pee. Yay! Oh, I've never heard a better place to end a podcast, so oh. I think we should move into quotes, 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 quotes. <laughs> I'll go first with my quote. Uh, I didn't. I took no notes this time. I usually take some notes when I'm watching. All I did was write down the quote I wanted so that nobody else took it. Uh, so mine's when they uh, they meet up with John C. Riley, and it's one of my favorite moments in any movie so far this year where they're catching him up on history. And he's asking about like the Cubs and all this sort of stuff. And this randomly at one point, like, oh, we also put a man on the moon. And he's just like curious, but also kind of doesn't give a shit. He's like, no kidding. Did we just leave him up there? What's he eating? <laughs> <laughs> I, for a man who's Dang. been stuck on an island forever, he's so well adjusted. Oh, yeah. Like, he's just insanely like, well adjusted. He's the best kind of like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> Which is John C. Riley. Oh, totally. Yeah. <laughs> 
He kind of reminds me of like a smarter version of um, fuck, what's his name from Bob's Burgers, the guy who was always at the counter. Oh, Teddy. Oh. Teddy, Teddy. Yes, he kind of reminds me of a smarter version of Teddy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you would love to check it out with Dr. Steve. I better. I like his sense of humor. Yeah. My uh, favorite quote um, is just the, like the tonality of this movie and how it deals with uh, the astounding things that are going on and how so many other characters are like, are we going to talk about that? Uh, and the one character, the old veteran that's not Samuel L., uh, and his response to that was, yeah. That was an unconventional encounter. <laughs> yes. Uh, and he's just saying, as a matter of fact, uh, don't know what to do about it. I'm going to eat my beans. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I always go for the most thematic quote, but uh, and I don't, and I didn't write down like who said it or what circumstance, uh, so get on me. Um, but at some point, someone says, sometimes the enemy doesn't exist until you go looking for one. Mm. That's, that's this movie in a nutshell. Well, yeah. it's that same guy, actually, I think. I think you're right. Yeah. Oh, is it? I think it's... Old grenade. Oh hands. yeah, that was after he was discussing. <laughs> You're right. That You're was right. how he was discussing when he got his uh, gun because he oh, took it from a guy that. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah that I'm gonna never... start writing down like where I got the quote from, guys. Mm. Yeah. They call me Boom Boom. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hand grenade. Oh god. <laughs> Death I just had a hand <laughs> off. <laughs> oh, I love Dave Garrity. Uh, so mine is a John C. Riley scene. It's the one where he's talking to, I don't remember who this guy is, but he's like, I can't tell when I'm talking or when I'm not talking. Oh, that was so funny. <laughs> and he's like, you're talking, really? Yeah. And then they go through it and he's like, I'm going to stab you <laughs> by the end of the night. <laughs> really? And he's like, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I was like, this part's great. So good. That was one of the oddest moments where I'm like, wait, is John C. Riley just crazy? I have a feeling they like debated over whether to cut that scene or not. And then they were like, it's just funny. Let's leave it. Yeah. I live for moments like that. <laughs> He did get, after once the bad shit started happening, he was the only reason to laugh in that movie. Because yeah. like that and what we were saying earlier, he was like, it's a stupid name. <laughs> <laughs> I love the back. I love the backtracking on that. Well, there were a bunch of uh, serious quotes I wrote down, but I'm going to go for silly and go for, we're on a plot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to call it that, a plot. <laughs> I just, I love the dissection of that. Well, we're on a boat. It's really more of a plane. A plot. We're on a plot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can just see the wheels turning yes. the whole time. This is the world we exist in. Okay, let's go. <laughs> we're creating new things and discovering new things, and we're just going with it, guys. Yeah. I-, I love it. Uh, so, review system for today. War movies. Because this is essentially a war movie just with a big monkey in it, but yeah. still. So, any and all war movies. The Longest Day. Okay. Because it was kind of a long movie. But also... <laughs> But also because there was a lot of introspection in The Longest Day about why we're here. And you also get to see both sides and like kind of look at war from the perspective of, oh my God, why are we doing this to each other? And and there was a lot of that in this movie. Also, I really love The Longest Day. Starship Troopers. Wow. Fuck you. Were you going to take that? <laughs> yes, but go ahead. <laughs> That's a good Sorry, choice. honey. Uh, it's a movie about war uh, and people not expecting what type of war they were fighting, uh, fighting giant monsters that you, later on you find out uh, you kind of started the war, uh, right? Didn't they, The buggers didn't immediately attack the... Right, it's the humans who started the, the war. The humans started trying to like invade or something, and then the bugs started coming to defend themselves and destroyed a whole bunch. Um, well, both sides. And just a lot way. of satire about war mongering and how other people profit from it and how <laughs> other people sides. become desperate yeah. within war. Uh, and just a lot of people make fun of that movie for being what it is, but it's also a very sincere movie at the exact same time it's being absurd. That movie is genius. Yeah. Genius, I say. It's just like social satire. I mean, done well is just goes under the surface a little bit and you rewatch it multiple times and you get more and more out of it. Genius. I feel like the yeah. Denise Richards casting was like is a big problem with that movie. I mean, the they director were, actually said, uh, "Do you want?" To uh, no, I, I agree with that, but it, it was more so. It, it's a melodrama, and they wanted somebody who was going to overact like hell, and they got someone, they but did. they, they, I think they went the wrong way. Yeah. Didn't the director say when we went to the screening that he didn't necessarily choose all the actors uh, because of the, but the, he wanted people to see the movie, so he chose some yeah. of the actors based on. He, to get people in the seats. He did that for a while, and then when he stopped doing that, he started making better movies again, like yeah. Black Book. And what I hear is L, but I haven't seen L yet. Um, although it is sitting on Do a disc. Do you want to add to it? Since that no, was... no, no, no. I, I have a backup that's uh, even better. Small Soldiers. Ooh! Uh, <laughs> see? what I tell you? 
Sorry. I love Small Soldiers. I haven't watched that in forever. It's it doesn't hold up very well, but it's not. <laughs> it, I still enjoy it. I just watched yeah. it like three nights ago at work. Um, the the reason why I picked that one for this one is because it is a movie that like on its surface level, oh, it's a neighborhood versus toys. But when you watch it, there's some very deep themes in that movie about like being anti-war and how like peaceful mm-hmm. is probably the better way to go. Uh, and it's just kind of a fun movie. And that's what this one kind of was. It's kind of dorky. It's a big monster movie and soldiers versus that. But there's a lot of deep themes and good messages that are kind of similar to the ones in Small Soldiers. And mm. people should watch Small Soldiers again. Even <laughs> though it doesn't really hold up. It's still awesome. <laughs> still has Jay Moore in it, right? Everybody loves Jay Moore. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> uh, so I'll go. Uh, it's, it's kind of a stretch, but Tropic Thunder. Uh, I love Tropic Thunder so hard. Because <laughs> it's like... There's a lot of constructed war stuff at the beginning, and the movie Tropic Thunder is very constructed with all the actorly bits and all that. So, like, I liked what they did in Kong for the war stuff, but it was fake. Like, it was very stylized to the sense where it's like, okay, this is style. I'm very much seeing the artifice of this. This is, like, you're zooming in on the glasses with explosions and, like, very kind of cheesy. But, but that I, was but sincerity I still enjoy- about the how people become obsessed with war. Yeah, yeah. But I still was with it. Like, I was still into it. But and I kind of had similar things with like okay yeah this is you're trying to be really funny but and, and I'm still enjoying it like I'm with it so um well the movie that just popped into my head is Life is Beautiful no oh, okay. okay um I would not ever equate that to a Kong is, movie but I, I I've I, never said seen war. it yeah I did <laughs> you <Yeah>. said <laughs> war I did yeah. this is interesting um it's a great movie yeah, yeah just because well you also see like before the war how life was and then like after. In the concentration camps, the father protecting his son from just everything, just from everything and, like, anything that is going on around. And, um, and because, because, because Nazis are bad, yo. <laughs> they <Yes>. are. <laughs> it's they weird really are. that you have yeah. to clarify that in 2017, but, yeah. I mean, the official stance, I think, of this podcast is that Nazis are bad. Of course. I can't really argue with that. Yeah, I don't really feel comfortable <laughs> I don't know going any anyone, other way with that. Yeah. I don't know why anyone fucking do. would. If you pay attention to any of our video content. They have content, a valid in between the frames. Uh, perspective, guys, and we need to give them a platform. Devil's advocate, man. I put a lot of subliminal messaging in our video content about punching Nazis. Okay. You might not have seen it, but you definitely cool, cool. feel it. Yeah. Like that cosplayer yeah. girl who cosplays as Supergirl, Supergirl and she's would a Nazi. Not and I'm like, Supergirl would punch the shit out of you, honey. Oh, man. I love that she's like, well, I wasn't at the rally, and then people just kept There's posting video videos of, of her at the at rally. rally. <laughs> it's like, you dumb dumb. Uh, anyhow, that's the end of today's episode. <laughs> what a great place to end it on. Dumb dumb. <laughs> dumb, dumb. Supergirl punching Nazis. <laughs> punching Nazis is so fun. Uh, yeah. So a quick plug for next week's episode, because I'm very excited about it, because next week is our 200th episode. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to be a battle episode. Ooh. When 200 you reach. Yep. Uh, so for the 100th episode, we did an entire episode on my favorite movie of all time, the best film ever made, and mm. if anyone disagrees with me, they're wrong. Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Um, okay. That would also have been my choice. It's it's No perfect. marriage is perfect, guys. Okay. Yeah, but some movies are, like Terminator 2 Judgment Day. <laughs> uh, uh, I agree with you. I agree with you wholeheartedly on that one. It's one of the best movies. Mm. Not one of It is the best movie No, it's ever the made. best. Um, um, sure. So anyhow. Oh, Chewy. Star Wars. <laughs> Sorry, it's not Terminator 2 Judgment. It's not Terminator 2 Judgment. Oh, yeah, because of the global influence and cultural I'm sorry I missed this episode. Well, I, just, I wouldn't have been battling because I would have just been yeah. like, yeah, you're right, you're right. You're right. <laughs> well, that, that one is just a love letter to that movie. Okay. Uh-huh. So next week is going to be Everyone's Around the Table's favorite movie of all time. Oh, fuck, I was going to pick Terminator 2 Judgment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we have special guest uh, Eric Stoltz coming out for that one. And okay. he's going to, I don't know what he's bringing to the table. Wait, what? Actual Eric Stoltz? Uh, well, he is an actual not, Eric Stoltz. Not so, oh, not, <laughs> not Eric Stoltz. Not so he got ginger. really excited But he also for does have curly hair. Okay. He does have curly hair. Right. Uh, and a very deep, illustrious voice. He does. I was really excited It's for a smooth there. butter over the airwaves. Yeah. Um, and I don't know what he's picking, but we'll, we'll announce those all next week. And then after that, we have uh, Guards of the Galaxy Volume 2 coming up. Yes! And then in honor of the movie Tag coming to Blu-ray, which is going to be very hard to find, we're just going to do that director's previous movie, Why Don't We Play in Hell? Um, which I'm very excited to talk about because oh. I don't I haven't heard anyone fucking talk about Why Don't You Play in Hell and that was one of the well, best movies a lot of people movies. didn't see it one of the best I've movies that came out movie. I think it was three years ago now something like that yeah one of the best movies of that year that's the fucking one where they're trying to make the movie phenomenal with the, yeah, it's the Japanese film they're making the yeah. movie with the Yakuza right yeah, yeah. the Yakuza is oh, a movie yeah. about that's, that's going a great one. To talk war. about loving movies about making movies fucking incredible and, and extra violence very very excited so to talk good. about that in three weeks 
Uh, Can't wait. So that's us. You can find us online, athpod.com. You can email us, athpodcast at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter, ath underscore podcast. Everywhere else, ath podcast. Uh, Film Cutaways, where can we find you? At thecutaways.com and at Cutaways Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we're on iTunes and Stitcher and wherever you find podcasts. Do you have an episode you want to plug that's coming up? Ooh, that's coming up would be... Ten things I hate about you. Yes. Oh, oh boy. Oh. I've actually seen that one. <laughs> <laughs> I think we did an episode on it, didn't did we? we? Yeah, it might have just been in a battle, but yeah. we've definitely talked about it on here before. That'll be a fun one. I'll have to look out for that one. Um, so thank you very much for coming out. Thank can I, you. Can I plug my business, my bow business? Oh, of course. I, I started a new business making hair bows based on TV shows and film that I like. And I'm starting with Doctor Who, but I have ideas for Game of Thrones. I have some ideas for like some other cool stuff. Oh, Firefly, boy, that slits your throat at a wedding. And like, yeah, I'm going to make hair bows. I make hair bows. So you can find me if you go to Etsy. I'm Bear Trap Bows. I'm also on Facebook as Bear Trap Bows. Um, can you do that's a awesome Twilight one? Thing. I know it's a movie, not a movie. But I'm not a fan of Twilight. I know, but, but could... it would just be funny if you did a hologram bow with know. a little red thing in the middle. Because you know, I mean, if you want a specific, he's a vampire who glitters. Also, if you want a specific kind of, if you have an idea for a bow, I will make it for you. Yeah. So, yeah. the Twilight. So bear trap bow. bows, yeah. cutaways podcast, ATH podcast. That's everything. Bye. 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 Bye.